What up players, Warboss Tay up in this mud. Welcome to my how to paint an ogre for um, Warhammer Fantasy Battles Ogre Kingdom's army. The uh, model is taken from the battalion box set of the Ogre Kingdom set that I got that I reviewed a little while back. And um, the paint scheme I'm going to include in the description at the bottom, so just follow that if you want to get any of the... If you want to follow along with me, just go check out, check that out. I'll give you all the paints that I used. And um, hope you enjoyed it, and hope you have a great day. Bye. Alright, let's get started. We're going to be painting the ogre's flesh with Talarn flesh. I swear it says Talarn flesh under there. So any of the skin parts, you're going to paint Talarn flesh. Bolt gun metal, we're going to paint for any of the silver areas, like the sword, blade, um maybe the bracelets on his arm, anything um, like the steel-toed tips of the boots, anything that you want to be silver, even though we're going to rust them up later, we're going to base them in boat gun metal. Kemri ground brown we're going to use for any of the straps, ropes, or uh, pouches around the model. For example, oh and also for the, um, for the wood of the barrel. So, so, like for example, this, the, the ropes on the top of the um, club, the barrel wood, the cloth of the sack, and um, yeah, I think that's it. You can also, if you want, paint the straps or the, the cloth wrapped around his, around his arm in that color, or use scorched brown or any other um, brown, or th even denim stone to make it look like cloth bandages. Speaking of denim stone, you can either do that for the for the um, bandages or the like wrappings. Don't use denim stone for rope though. Um, use it just for for any strips of cloth that are not um, main areas of the model on the main like larger areas of the model. We use that as kind of an accent color. Because we're also going to use denim stone for the teeth and any bone sections like if your model has this uh, bag on a sack it's got a bone jutting out from the top and a skull at the bottom so we're gonna use denim stone on that we're gonna paint the trousers in Fenris gray which is a dark blue color and um, should go nicely off of the the warmer skin tones for any stone on the model we're gonna paint Adeptus battle grain by stone I mean if your model is armed with this club then you're gonna use a stone uh, the Adeptus Battle Grave for that to color the stone, as well as the earrings, if your model is wearing earrings or has other stone ornaments on them. And finally, we've got Calvin Brown, which we're going to use to paint the hair of the model, the beard, the mustache, and anything that we want to end up being uh, bronze, this dark and dirty bronze, we're going to paint. So, like maybe the gut plate, the face of the gut plate, uh, and let's see, is there anything else on these models? Okay, so the bronze of the gut plate the hair on the model. We're also going to use uh, that Calvin Brown to paint the ropes on the back of the barrel. And um, you can also use it if you want to paint these uh, wrappings around the... around the... Um, actually use the Calvin Brown to paint the wood of the club since we're using it for the wood of the barrel just to be consistent. So I'm going to go do all of those now. I've got my trusty timer here. Oops so that we can see how long it's going to take me to put these base coats on and then I will get back to you as soon as the next step starts. Boop! Okay guys, so that took a little bit longer than I would have wanted. 35 minutes! And that's just because I wanted to get good even coverage over all of the areas and not get the paint looking too thick or gloopy, which is a word that I feel like I've uh, used a lot in these tutorials. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to mix up our dark bronze um, or brass, I guess, I, I'm not sure what you would call it, but our rusted bronze brass color. And to do that we're going to need two colors. We're going to need dwarf bronze and we're going to need tin bits. And we're going to make a one-to-one -one mixture of that color. And we're going to apply it to all of the areas that we want to be that color, like the face of the gut plate, I know, and these um, these, what they're, they're silver now, but um, on the model I see on the Games Workshop website, these two silver pieces are actually bronze, as well as the, um, this part of the, the handguard, or the, the hilt, 
area of the of the sword and what else looks like it's bronze I think that looks like it okay so after I'm done doing that I'm going to let that dry and while I'm letting that dry I'm gonna apply Ogryn flesh to the skin of the model and uh, while the Ogryn flesh is drying by then the gut plate and all the dark browns areas should be dry I'm gonna apply Bada black to all of those areas and what that's gonna do is it's gonna uh, tie the colors together it's gonna create a lot of great shadows and recesses so any of the silver areas gonna apply bad at black like the sword the hilt um, all of the dark bronze areas and that should tie in all of that to all the brown areas um, like the ropes and the wood we're going to apply Devlin mud and Devlin mud is gonna do the same effect but not be as dark and the Devlin mud we're also gonna apply to the bag of bones on the back and um, finally I think that's it yeah, so Devlin Mud to all the brown, and um, we might as well paint uh, Bad at Black onto the stone areas as well, since they're dark gray and they've got silver on them. So, we'll see you when all of that is done in the next step. Okay, so here's what our model should look like with the washes now. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a second wash to any large areas of metal like the sword. So a second wash of Bad at Black to get it to really, really darken down and be really dull and uh, almost like stained with soot instead of just oily and greasy. So a second application of Bad Up Black to that. The next thing we're going to do is we're also going to um, wash the pants at this stage with a uh, serum in blue and that should make some really nice um, shadows in the pants. You could also do that in the step before if you wanted. While the washes are drying, we're going to start highlighting the skin back up with Talar Flesh and also adding a little bit of Deneb Stone to the mix and we're only going to be using that for the highlights where the, the light would naturally hit like over here on the chest area over up here at the shoulder so find uh, a lighting situation that you like and um, look at where the light naturally hits the model and then apply your highlights to those areas uh, what else are we gonna do oh we're also gonna be adding the red right hand we're following the Games Workshop um, color scheme so you don't have to do this but if you want to get a studio Games Workshop studio style army, then they've all got their right hands bloodied. And um, so that's what we're gonna do with the main core, mainstay of our forces. So for that, we're gonna be using Dark Flesh as, um, as the first color, and we're just gonna be watering it down, covering the hand completely in Dark Flesh, and then feathering it slowly up the forearm. Um, not getting it all the way to the elbow, but it looks like it's up to like mid forearm and then, oh sorry about that, and then right under the bicep. So what I'm actually do is, doing is I'm looking at Games Workshop's website for most of these. So this is the model I'm using as a reference point. See how the blade is really dark and dulled and then the, the, um, the blood of the, um, the blood on the arm only goes up to like right under the bicep and has that kind of U shape almost. So that's what we're following and um, when we are done with that, with the highlights and the blood application as well as the second wash on the metals, then we'll talk about highlighting the brass, the bronze, and the silver in the next step. Oh, and let's take a look at our at our clock at where we stopped. I stopped it actually before the wash started drying. I just um, stopped it at the end of the application and it's at 41.10. So this would obviously be going a little bit faster if I was doing batch painting, um, but for, for the purposes of this tutorial I wanted to make sure that I got everything right. So it's taking a little bit longer than it normally would. Alright, so that's pretty easy. I just kind of dry brushed the highlight color for the skin and um, I think it looks pretty nice. And uh, they should change dark flesh. They should change the title of it to just dried blood because it's so perfect and gross. So the next thing we're going to do is actually before we move on to the um, highlighting of the metallics we are going to highlight up the, the dried blood uh, effect and we're also going to um, add some details to the, uh, the ogre's face. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, paint on to highlight the areas of the dried blood where the light is naturally hitting. We're going to highlight that with a thin line of bleached bone and then a thin line of or I'm sorry, a thin line of dwarf flesh first, which is right here, dwarf flesh, and then bleached bone, 
and the bleached bone effect should make it look like the light glinting off of the dried flesh material and then um, and then we're gonna wash it with Baal Red afterwards to tie in all those colors together. The effect that I'm hoping to achieve is this kind of lightly picked out details on the skin and um, also getting the dark shadows in the recesses. So again that's dwarf flesh and then bleached bone and then washing the whole thing with uh, Baal Red afterwards. Also for the face we are going to do a really really watered down dark flesh and we're going to paint the ogre's bottom lip with that um, to give his uh, face a little bit of color and then we're going to take some really watered down f Fenris Grey and we're going to paint that under the eyelids to make him look like he's hasn't been getting much sleep. So in those little little eyelids, in those deep sunken eyes, you're not really going to be painting the eyeballs because you can't really see them with the ogre and flesh. Uh, so the the um, Fenris Grey is going to do a lot to punch out the um, blue, unhealthy blue tone of you know like when you don't get enough sleep and you have those dark pockets under your eyes. Okay, so. We're gonna go do that. Oh, I'm gonna have to smooth out that wash. And then um, we will come back and move on to the next step after that. Okay, here's our ogre now. I found that I decided to try and experiment and get in there and really try to pick out those eyeballs. And I guess you can. You can pick them out, I think, but having the dark pockets and dark circles under the eyes really do help. Uh, I added a little bit of skull white to the teeth to pick them out just a little bit. What else did I do? Um, I re-highlighted up the bone with Deneb Stone in the bags, and oh, that blood and gore just looks so gross. So, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight the pants up a little bit, and it looks like, it looks like they're from, um, I'm sorry, getting out of focus, from looking at the um, Games Workshop website, it looks like they're highlighting up the pants with a mixture of Fortress Grey and Fenris Grey. Not sure, I don't have the color schemes that the studio painters use, but um, it looks like they're, the trousers are naturally, oops, trousers are naturally fading up to a grey, so that's kind of what we're going to go for. In the meantime, um, while we're doing the Fortress Grey mixed in with Fenris Grey, we're also going to mix a little bit of Fortress Grey into Skull Black, or I guess Codex Grey is the next step down, and we're going to highlight up the boots. Okay, once we're done with that, we're going to get to the bronze and all the dark bronze and brass. And we're going to actually be painting that back up with, um, it looks like a mixture of dwarf bronze and um, mithril silver. Oh, sorry, I keep going out of focus, I'm sorry. Um, so dwarf bronze and mithril silver, and um, we're going to be highlighting back up the, the raised edges and then it looks like they finish off with with um, my throw silver for the very edges Ooh, looks like I, I missed a spot there so we're you're gonna be getting a uh, my throw silver and dwarf bronze to pick out like the nose the cheeks the eyebrows and then you're doing a really fine application of my throw silver okay the next thing you're gonna do after that so it looks like we're doing the trousers the boots the highlights on the on the um, on the dark bronze is we are going to going to pick out the blade in um, in silver. So we're gonna feather chainmail along the edge of the blade at the bottom on both sides. Okay, and uh, let's see how long it took me to get to this new section. So right now, uh, from from the last time till now, it is now 46 minutes and 13 seconds. So we'll see how long it takes to get these next couple of steps done. Okay, see you then. Hey, all right, so check out our gut plate is now all scratched up and shiny. I started to add Codex Gray and Fortress Gray to the earrings to highlight those up and also to the stone here on the club. For this one, after Fortress uh, Codex Gray, I'm gonna mix the Fortress Gray with a little bit of bleached bone to get more of a creamy highlight for the, the uppermost edges. And um, it looks like other than that, it our, our guy is almost ready to be built, uh, uh, to be based and finished. The sword, we're going to have a, this scratched up effect on the Games Workshop models with um, 
with chainmail. So you're gonna take chainmail and you're just gonna lightly dry brush it down the end edges of it to show the, the wear and tear on the sword. Okay, and I think, is there anything else that we have to do besides the tattoos? So after we do the chainmail um, on the sword and finish highlighting up the stone, I'm going to base the model and then we're gonna talk about different kinds of tattoos you can do for him and then we'll be finished. Oops, how could we forget about the verdigris? Verdigris, we, we cannot. So, mm, that's nice. Uh, using a dry brush, got a nice uh, almost frosted effect. So, awesome. Dry brush, thank you, La Soul. Um, yeah, but the verdigris effect, we're gonna be painting into the recesses of any dark bronze metals that we have. And for that, we're gonna do a mixture of dark angel's green and hawk turquoise. That's gonna get a nice uh, dark greenish aqua color. So I'm gonna do that and I'll uh, see you in the next step. So there we go. Yeah, that looks really awesome. Um, Verdigris is totally awesome. So the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some tattoos on this guy and um, actually just one tattoo. And um, a lot of the motifs of the ogre kingdoms are um, this the Great Maw, right, which is this giant ring of teeth. So, um, let's see where Games Workshop puts there. It's like on the shoulder of this one guy. Um, there's nothing on this guy. Right here in the left, uh, left side of this guy's chest, right here on the right side of this guy's chest. Um, here in the, looks like the arm. Uh, nothing on this guy. I'm gonna take a look in the old Ogre Kingdoms book and see what I've got over there And um, then what I'm planning on doing is we're gonna come back to our model here And I'm going to block it out in carrot and granite watered down and um, And then paint it on and we'll see what that looks like in the next step All right, so in the end I decided to go for the classic maw ring of teeth um, The dimensions are a little off, but I think that's okay because um, they're not supposed to be you know that <laughs> that accurate um, I think um, I'm, I'm just getting the hang of it so uh, the next one will be better and better and better than that place them in different areas around this guy's body so this is pretty much the finished product you can stop here base him on your own for me what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I already painted the base in carrot and granite I'm gonna uh, dry brush it now with calthan brown then Kemri brown and then bleached bone and then add some dry um, brush, green um, brush to to the base like this here. This is kind of the effect that I'm going for. I've also got this grass, green grass from Gale Force 9 which you might have seen before on my pirate model. So this is the effect I'm going for with that. It'll look like um, underbrush with some scorched grass and some of that foliage should look really nice. So I'm gonna do that now and then we'll see what that looks like and wrap this video up. There you have it, a painted ogre for the new Ogre Kingdoms, well not the new, but the um, for uh, the new paint scheme of the Ogre Kingdoms that Games Workshop is going for, the fleshy pink warmer flesh tones. I gave him uh, some grass green, scorched grass, a little bit of clump foliage, and painted it in the same colors of the Empire because I think the darker color will really help the skin tones and the color on the model pop out better. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, hope you got a little bit of insight or inspiration, and um, we'll see you in the next video.